very warm welcome to our service of worship and I hope over the last couple of days you've had a wonderful time of coming together and indeed celebrating Christmas with family and friends despite the current restrictions and challenges that we are faced with. I hope Christmas for you in this year 2021 has been very blessed indeed. Well today you come to this service and as you come to this service we have entitled it Unto Us A Child Is Born as we continue to celebrate Christmas and indeed the impact of Jesus. Just one intimation and that is to say that next Sunday the 2nd of January we continue with our online services and for the first Sunday of a brand new year you can join us from 7.45 a.m. onwards. Now you don't have to get up at that particular time because the service you will be able to watch it any time after that as well but that with the 2nd of January from 7.45 a.m. onwards please join us for the first service of a brand new year. But today as already highlighted as we come together we remember that unto us a child is born and with that in mind let us return to the place where it all started, David's town, Bethlehem, as we have our first Christmas carol, once in royal David's city. Christmas carol to commence a service with once in Royal David's City. I would like to begin this address by getting you all to reflect on the past and that in a sense goes back to maybe your childhood, maybe the childhood of your children or even now grandchildren. Because one thing that as youngsters we all looked forward to was the arrival of Christmas presents and in particular toys. Well, I wonder, as you look back to these recollections and these experiences of days gone by, what your favourite toys were. Well, let's have a wee look through the annals of the last number of decades 
and see what Christmas toys became very, very prominent. Indeed, if we go back, first of all, to the 1960s, I wonder if you can recollect what toy was really so popular that for many years it was the number one bestseller at Christmas. Well, it was, in fact, Barbie. And so maybe in your younger days, um, you would have come across a Barbie doll, which I believe are still as popular today. If we take things on a few years and come to 1978, I wonder if you have any idea what was the number one bestseller in 1978. If you wish to have a clue, it revolves around the release of a very special film. The film was Star Wars, and what captured everyone's imagination, December 1978, was trying to buy Star Wars figures. We now come up to the 1980s and to 1980 itself, and this is very interesting, but the number one, the best-selling toy for Christmas 1980, um, was something very unique and which tested all our intelligence. And it was, in fact, a Rubik's Cube. And I'm sure everyone, at one time or another, has had the opportunity to try the Rubik's Cube. Well, let's come up now to 1992. And thanks to a TV programme being shown to a new generation, this particular toy became all the rage. So much so, and here's a good clue for you, Blue Peter even became involved. I don't know if you remember that at that time everyone was watching Thunderbirds and trying to get Tracy Island. So much so that they were all sold out and Blue Peter put together its own creation where you could build your very own Tracy Island. Well, in 1996, four years later, Again, it was a movie that ensured the top-selling Christmas toy of that year. And the movie was actually Toy Story. And the toy that became so popular was Buzz Lightyear with his famous voice and phrases. Well, moving on a good number of years and more up to date, modern technology began to take over as the 21st century impacted. And as a result, iPads and mobile phones took the place of some toys as children looked to embrace the wonders of this new technology. And yet, you know, some toys never lose their popularity. And this year, for example, 2021, it's actually envisaged that one of the best-selling toys will be Lego. And that Lego has remained popular literally through the decades. And indeed, during lockdown, many people sought to renew an acquaintance with Lego. Just really constructive toys to keep themselves and their families busy putting together models. And so sales increased. So who knows, maybe this Christmas, Lego will be fairly high up the sale of toys. Other items which have remained popular over the years include, and maybe you can guess one or two, scooters. Scooters have never lost their popularity, and yes, they've been revamped through the years with different models, more modern approach, but scooters have remained popular. Another thing that's never lost its popularity, model cars. And I'm sure we can all relate to that because Cars change all the time, as do buses, lorries, vans, etc. And because of that, there's always new models coming onto the market. So model cars and things associated with transport retain their popularity. And one other item that appears to always retain its popularity is actually a pram. Prams have retained their popularity as well. And with that in mind, I want to tell you the true story surrounding a young girl. And it all 
commenced in a country church a good number of years ago. And indeed, this happened in a little rural parish church that had placed a nativity scene outside, complete obviously with the various figures. Well, one day after Christmas, the minister was looking at the nativity scene when he noticed to his horror that the baby Jesus was missing from the figures. And immediately the minister thought to himself that he would contact the local police and ask them if they could investigate. But just then he saw a little girl who he knew called Claire. And Claire had just received a new pram for Christmas. And then the pram, I'm sure you've guessed it, was the infant Jesus. And so the minister approached Claire and asked her, Claire, where did you get that little infant? And at that, Claire looked up and smiled with a sense of honesty and transparency and said, I took him from the church nativity scene. And why did you take him? asked the minister. Well, with a sheepish grin, Claire said, Well, about a week before Christmas, I prayed to the Lord Jesus. And I told him that if he would bring me a pram for Christmas, I would give him a journey round the village. And I'm keeping my part of the bargain. Unto us, a child was born. After all, Jesus came to this world for all humanity. And indeed, for centuries, people had wanted a saviour to come. Send us a saviour, they cried, and we will follow his ways. And then, when Jesus came, he sought to make the world a better place, where peace, hope and love would be embraced. And he even put the icing in the cake by rising from the tomb and showing that nothing could defeat God and that eternal life was not a dream, but a reality. And in response, all Jesus asked was for people to keep their side of the bargain, like that little girl Claire, and to follow his ways. Well, you know, our celebrations over the past few days invite us all to continue fulfilling our side of the bargain by proclaiming Christ as our Saviour and by following his ways. And may we all continue to respond accordingly. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you this day, fresh from our celebrations of your birth, recalling that centuries ago you entered our world as the baby of Bethlehem and ascended over 30 years later as the Saviour of the world. Therefore, Lord Jesus, may we never forget your achievements in our world, reflected in the legacy of faith that you have given to each and every one of us. And therefore, in response, may we show a sense of loyalty and trust by continuing to proclaim that you are our Saviour, that we will strive to fulfil our side of the bargain each day by following the ways of the Christian faith, guided by your words, blessed by your presence, assured by your eternity. And all of this we pray in your name and now come together as the one united family to say these words. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. After the next carol, we're going to head down to Presswick South Parish Church, where Tom McLeod will indeed be leading the rest of this service. But I look forward to seeing you on the 2nd of January and I hope you have a very blessed new year when it arrives. But now we have the carol, the first Noel.
Thank you very much, Kenneth. Uh, reading today is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, reading from verse 8 to verse 15. And this is a story of how the shepherds heard about the birth of Jesus. Luke 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those in whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Amen. And may God bless this reading from his holy word. On the night that Jesus was born, there were some shepherds in the hills outside Jerusalem. They were looking after their sheep. It was very dark and quiet. And then all of a sudden, God surprised the shepherds. A bright light shone in the night sky and an angel made a big announcement to the shepherds. And in that announcement, the angel told the shepherd three things about baby Jesus. The first thing the angel told them was that the baby was just what they were hoping for. One of the presents I received this year for Christmas was this book. I really enjoy cooking and the two chefs Dave Myers and Cy King, better known as the Hairy Bikers, are among my favourite chefs. And I've been hinting about this book for some time because it has lots of wonderful dishes for me to attempt and it was just what I wanted. You know it's great when we get a present that's just what we were hoping for. The second thing the angel told the shepherds was that the baby was more than they were expecting. Another present I got this year came not in a gift wrapped box but in an envelope and inside it was a beautiful card and inside the card the message read, Dear Tom, Happy Christmas. Hope that you have a terrific day with the family. Sorry I wasn't able to deliver this personally, but I send all my love to you, Linda, and the kids. Love, Aunt Mary. I was so touched to have received the card because Aunt Mary lives quite some distance away and I haven't seen her for almost 18 months due to the COVID restrictions and the fact that she doesn't keep very good health. Then, as I was just about to throw the envelope away, a £20 note fell out onto the floor. I never expected that. It's great when we get a present that's just what we're hoping for, and it's more than we're expecting. The third thing that the angel told the shepherds was that the baby was just what they needed. The third present I want to share with you this morning was this lovely new anorak that I received. That's just what I needed. I get really cold in winter's days and so this anorak will keep me warm and cosy. It's just what I need. I'm sure like me, you'll get some wonderful presents this Christmas. Some would be what you were hoping for. Some might even have exceeded your expectations and some might just be what you need. And you know, that's what God gave us on that first Christmas. He gave us the best ever present because he gave us his son 
the baby Jesus, who was just what we were hoping for. He was more than we expected. And of course, he's just what we need. There's one thing I've learned about Christmas gifts. No matter how much you enjoy receiving them, they just don't last forever. If you get nice new clothes, eventually they'll wear out or go out of style or you'll outgrow them. Even if you get a fun toy that you really enjoy playing with, eventually it could break or you'll grow tired of it and put it away in a cupboard. Maybe you got chocolate treats in your stocking, but when you eat it, it's gone. But there's one Christmas gift that's different. It never wears out. It never goes out of style. You never grow out of it. And that is the true gift of Christmas. It's the gift God gave to us, his son, Jesus. The Bible tells us that all who receive Jesus and believe in him become the children of God. When we become the children of God, we have all the rights and privileges of being his child. God will love us, he will protect us, and provide everything that we need. And the best part of all is that it never ends. I enjoy giving and receiving gifts at Christmas, but I think it's important to remember the greatest gift of all was God's gift to us. It's the gift that just keeps on giving. Amen. And now in the quietness of this sanctuary, let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. God who spoke the world into being, Jesus, the word of life, Holy Spirit who lives within us, we thank you for the power of word and story, your story, our stories intertwined. On this day where we retell the story of stars and angels, shepherds and a stable, of a powerful empire and the inbreaking of your kingdom and the birth of a child, we thank you for hope passed as a torch down through countless generations. Light of the world, we pray for all who walk in the darkness of uncertainty and despair. For those who wonder where their next meal will come from. For those who wonder where they will find shelter. For those who wonder if they will find a place where they will be safe from harm. For all who struggle to survive and wonder whether to keep on trying. Father, give them your strength and courage to fight on. And give to all of those who work tirelessly without desire for reward to help and assist them in any way. Your strength and encouragement to continue in their work. Lord God, we pray for all who live in a land of deep darkness. Places where corruption and greed strangle truth and stifle justice. Places where the vulnerable and those who speak up are crushed under heel of the powerful. Lord, give to all world leaders your knowledge that they may make decisions that are based on fairness, justice and equality for all. Guide them in all they do, that they will take action that will be for the benefit of everyone. And Heavenly Father, in this season of celebration, we pray for those who do not feel like celebrating, for those who walk in the dark valley of grief, for those who are ill at home in hospital in care homes or in hospice, and for those who care for them. May the story of the child in the manger kindle a flame of hope and comfort, May it be a sign of liberation. May it lead to that deep joy which goes beyond the tinsel and the glitter and acts as an anchor through all that life brings. Lord God, we give thanks for the wondrous story of your coming. 
to our level to walk with us in the darkness, to be our light on the way, to show us who you are and what love looks like, for being our guide and our example of how we should lead our lives. And all these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn today is O Come All Ye Faithful. Now, just before the benediction, on behalf of Kenneth and myself, I'd just like to wish everyone a very blessed Christmas, a peaceful and healthy new year. And thank you for joining us today from wherever you are. And a particularly big thank you to Arthur Mackay for all his help in pulling this service together today. And now let us pray. This Christmas, may we be like Mary, ready to serve God. May we be like the angels, singing God's glory for all to hear. May we be like the shepherds, raising our heads heavenwards, that we might look upon us riches with new eyes. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, this night and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>